let me just ask you to elaborate just uh, briefly in terms of, to, to me, that seems like a lot of impact on, on total plaque volume and plaque progression rates and so forth, especially when I think back to older IVA studies I was involved with. But uh, maybe you could put into context for the audience how that does compare to other studies of plaque uh, progression or regression. Yeah, so uh, there were some studies out of Japan that looked at um, um, other fish oil products, other, other uh, uh, EPA products, I should say, um, that, that uh, were also positive. This is uh, more of a parallel group to what we, what we studied in Reduce It. And this was obviously a US population. So I think it does add quite a bit to what we understand about this. Uh, um, we've seen plaque, <clears throat> excuse me, we've seen plaque progression slowing or, or regression with statin therapy. Um, this is now again, uh, adding to statin therapy in evaporate and we see now further benefits. So I think it is a supplementary to what we've seen in other, other trials using CTA or intravascular ultrasound if we, if we parallel a more invasive technique. Well, that's terrific. And, and you just made me think of something. You said supplementary and that made me think of supplements. And maybe I can ask Dr. Navar, she's thought a lot about these issues. Uh, to speak a bit about how what we're talking about and reduce it, a prescription medication called icosapentethyl, a uh, highly purified ethyl ester of EPA or icosapentenoic acid, which is one of the omega-3 fatty acids. How does icosapentethyl differ from omega-3 supplements? That is uh, stuff that you can just go into the store and buy without a prescription. And do those supplements offer any sort of benefit whatsoever in terms of CV risk reduction? Thanks, Dr. Bott. And this is really critically important because millions of our patients are taking supplement forms of fish oil. An important thing to know is that the FDA does not regulate supplements in the same way that they regulate prescription or even over-the-counter medications. Supplements are essentially relate, uh, regulated as food, which means that the only time the FDA will investigate safety concerns is if something is raised. Um, but there's no prospective requirement for safety data for supplements. There's not the same level of quality control, nor is there a mandate for effectiveness or efficacy data in the same way that we need from prescription drugs. We've had two large publicly funded trials of fish oil in preventing cardiovascular disease and supplement forms of fish oil have never been shown to lower the risk of cardiovascular disease. So these are not effective therapies. And there's a couple of reasons for this. The first reason is that the dose of EPA that you get out of a supplement is a fraction of the four gram dose that you get out of highly purified icosapent ethyl. So you don't get nearly the same dose as you would uh, need, at least based on what we saw in Jealous and Reduce It. The second is that supplement fish oil literally is just squeezed fish, taking the oil and putting it into a capsule. And because the lack of quality control, that often oxidizes, it contains DHA, which can raise LDL, as well as a number of other impurities. And Dr. Preston Mason has done a lot of work showing things like um, mercury content and other contaminants or things that you don't want to put into your body from supplements. So I think the reason why we, we see the differences is both in the amount of EPA, the presence of other things, and it's critically important that our patients know that when they're taking fish oil to try to lower their heart disease risk, they're likely not helping themselves. They could be causing harm. And as it relates to eligibility for icosapentethyl, even though they do reduce triglycerides a little bit, it might be just enough to make them not eligible for icosapentethyl without actually giving them any sort of cardiovascular benefit. So I strongly encourage my patients to reconsider the fish oil supplements they're taking um, unless there's some other really strong reason that they personally want to take those. Yeah, I think those are really important points. I mean, the supplements tend not to be that cheap either, so it's not necessarily such a great thing to be taking something that's not providing benefit and costing therapy, and perhaps displacing other evidence-based therapies that might otherwise be used. 